Yes, for two reasons. Firstly, uh, you see, some of the remarks for which contempt notices were issued, suo moto by this uh, judge Swaminathan, <coughs> were also directed against Justice Swaminathan himself. And therefore, when uh, especially when the judge was told to recuse himself because he had a conflict of interest, he ought to have recused himself. Instead, he said, because the Chief Justice has assigned this bench, therefore I must hear this. There is no such rule that if the Chief Justice has assigned a bench, he must hear it. If there is a conflict of interest, he must recuse. <coughs> and here there was a conflict of interest, so he ought not to have heard it. Secondly, you see, it is uh, totally wrong in my view uh, to hold somebody guilty of contempt for just saying that uh, the judiciary is riddled with corruption. Everybody knows that there is considerable corruption in the judiciary and therefore uh, people are entitled to say what Shankar did. Now, the, the view that many judges have that uh, power of contempt should be used in order to <clears throat> prevent people from exposing corruption in the judiciary. This is so that it does not destroy public confidence in the judiciary. This is a totally wrong view because public confidence in the judiciary is not dependent upon whether people are punished for saying that there is corruption in the judiciary or not. It depends upon how the actions of the judiciary are seen by the people. In fact, such attempts to stifle criticism of the judiciary by the threat or the power of contempt is a sure way of bringing the judiciary into further disrepute and destroying further confidence, public confidence in the judiciary. Therefore, that is why this branch of uh, contempt that is uh, uh, bringing the judiciary into disrepute, this part of contempt has been done away with in most civilized countries, including UK from where we have borrowed it. You yeah. see, and we have challenged this part of the contempt law in the Karnataka High Court. Our challenge is pending in the Karnataka High Court. Arun Shori. Uh, then uh, Mr. N. Ram and I, along with uh, the former editor of Outlook, Mr. Prashad, we have together challenged this part of the contempt law. So that is why I say that the uh, judgment in this case is not uh, merely uh, wrong because it has been given in violation of the principles of natural justice, that a judge who has some interest in the matter, is dealing with it when he ought not to have dealt with it, he ought to have recused. Secondly, it's, uh, it's not correct to punish somebody from merely saying, for merely saying that there is considerable corruption in the judiciary. Whether he words it by saying that it is riddled with corruption or whether he just said there is con considerable corruption at all levels of the judiciary comes to the same thing. So in my view, it's wrong. It's counterproductive and it's in violation of the principles of natural justice. But what is the procedure, sir, if uh, the court is taking a somoto contempt case? What is the procedure? Like you said, uh, you know, if the judge has some interest in this case, he should not hear the matter. But in this case, we have seen, you know, exactly the opposite happening uh, uh, because the earlier contempt notice was very clear because it was directly. Uh, on the remarks that were made uh, by Shankar against the judge who heard, who uh, you know initiated yes. uh, the sumo to contempt. Yes, yes. So, uh, so there is a specific provision in the Contempt of Courts Act that for contempt committed in the face of the court, the judge in whose face the contempt has been committed uh, should recuse himself immediately if some uh, objection is raised. And the principles of recusal are well settled that if you have some interest in the matter, then you ought to recuse yourself from hearing that case. In fact, in that uh, there's a, a case which went to the House of Lords where uh, one of the 11 judges had some 
sort of connection, some remote connection with the petitioner organization. And yet uh, the House of Lords held that that judge ought not to have heard that matter. And therefore, uh, that uh, uh, order was set aside. So therefore, therefore, uh, it was very, very important for this judge, Justice Swami Nathan, to have recused himself and not heard this case at all, where there was clearly a conflict of interest. And uh, secondly, uh, even otherwise, you see, uh, because I read from your report about it that this was pointed out to him and an objection was made that he should not be hearing it. Yet he proceeded to hear it by saying that the Chief Justice has assigned this bench, therefore I must hear it. That is certainly no good reason uh, for him to continue to hear this matter. And also, sir, uh, the manner in which uh, the trial was conducted, uh, because some say that uh, you know the, the respondent was not given enough time to put forth his argument because it was back-to-back -back hearings uh, and the time was very short. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Like how, so how does these proceedings happen? Because you yourself have uh, faced a contempt of court uh, uh, you know, case. So how does this entire uh, process uh, take place? Sir? No, I am not aware of how much time was given to Sabuku Shankar for uh, responding to the contempt notice. Uh, but uh, certainly adequate time must be given, in, especially in contempt cases. There is certainly no such tearing hurry. And the court should give uh, adequate time to the respondent to respond to the allegations. Uh, I don't know exactly how much time was given in this case uh, or not. But uh, certainly the order doesn't uh, augur well or doesn't read well and doesn't augur well for the judiciary. So the right to criticize judiciary in public forum, that's something that's being debated now or even it was being debated before. But after this case, uh, there is a lot of debate that is going on. Where do we stand now, sir? Can people criticize the judiciary in public forum? Are they allowed to do so or will they have to face contempt? No, people are allowed to uh, <clears throat> criticize or... Uh, discuss the judiciary in a public forum. There is no dispute about that. Uh, but you are not allowed to accuse a particular judge of being corrupt. Uh, because unless you have evidence of that and you plead truth as your defense. So if you accuse a particular judge of being corrupt, you must have the evidence to show that what you are saying is true. Because truth is a defense in a contempt case. So, otherwise, uh, suppose you say that there is considerable corruption or the judiciary is riddled with corruption. Uh, in my view, you only have to say that that is my perception. And you can, if you are asked to prove the bona fide reason why you believe that perception, you will have to give some evidence as to why you believe that there is considerable corruption or the judiciary is riddled with corruption. But uh, uh, in my view, making such remarks, especially when it is uh, well known and well understood that there is indeed considerable corruption in the judiciary. It's been acknowledged by a very large number of former chief justices of the Supreme Court a very large number of former judges of the Supreme Court, etc., <coughs> that there is considerable corruption in the judiciary. Uh, saying something like this, in my view, does not amount to contempt. And also in the year 2021, a uh, member of parliament, uh, D. Ravi Kumar, had moved a private member bill to curtail the contempt powers of uh, the high courts and supreme courts it's time that uh, something like this should be done what 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 do you think about this yes that is why we have challenged the provision see con contempt is of three kinds hmm. one is civil contempt disobeying an order of the court there is no problem with that criminal contempt is also of two kinds obstructing court proceedings interfering with the administration of justice. Now, anybody who obstructs court proceedings 
or threatens some judge or threatens even a litigant hey, look uh, if you go ahead with this case i'll break your leg etc uh, that's obstructing court proceedings uh, obstructing the course of justice that is criminal contempt there is no problem with that either the problem is with the second part of civil uh, of uh, criminal contempt which is scandalizing the court or lowering the authority of the court this is the problematic part which has been used by many courts to uh, punish people who talk about problems in the judiciary now that is problematic and that is why mr arun shori mr n ram mr prashad and i have challenged that and that challenge is pending before the karnatak high court that's the problematic part so uh, uh, we have to get rid of that uk england from where we have borrowed this part of contempt has already co- got rid of this in america there is no such thing as contempt by scandalizing the court or lowering the authority of the court etc in most civilized countries this branch of contempt law doesn't exist it exists only in india and it's high time that we did away with it